We are taking a canoe trip with the Scioto River Watch down the upper Scioto River in Hardin County. We started out at the canoe livery in Kenton and just heading downstream and going towards Pfeiffer Station. The water depth today is good. The uh, weather is was rainy this morning, but it's a little overcast this afternoon, but it's nice and cool for canoeing. Sun's starting to shine. Some of the things that we can notice along the river, the sweet williams are still blooming to some extent, not near as well as they were last week, but we can still see some signs of them. Some of the different types of trees that we have along the river. We can see silver maple, uh, box elder, cottonwood. I'm sure there will be some other kinds that we can see on down. Some that we have seen will be hackberry. We're still probably within the city limits, but we're still starting to get into some nice wildlife habitat where we have natural growth along the banks of the river. The uh, Wild raspberries are seem to be in full bloom right now. The tree trees along the river give us a nice canopy, riparian canopy, which helps to shade the river. This gives the, helps to keep the water cool so aquatic life has a better chance of survival. We've just seen a spotted sandpiper fly up the river up in front of the canoe and land on the bank. This is very typical of this species of bird. They will see them a lot of times canoeing and they'll fly out in front of the canoe. They'll be along the bank, they'll fly out in front of the canoe and go along the bank, land again. And a lot of times you can see them along the bank and they will kind of teeter up and down and their tail will go up and down. So that can help people identify what they're seeing. And that's a spotted sandpiper. This one got tired of us chasing him down the river, and so he's flown back upstream to get away from us. Some of the other birds that we're seeing are grackles, which is a fairly large black-colored black bird, quite common along the river. Some of the pretty trees that we notice are the black willow and they will tend to hang out over the river but they have a very aesthetic value and they also help to hold the river bank to keep it from washing. The willow can be very useful on a river bank uh, even planted in areas where you have a lot of bank erosion. just went under a really shaded area. It was really nice and cool from the trees shading the river. Uh, to the left, there was a nice clump of uh, silver maples. Uh, really very pretty area. You can notice the top of the river 
on the water there's a lot of white uh, almost cottony stuff and that's actually seeds that are falling off of the trees. There are some advantages that the Scioto River has as far as canoeing and one is it is really very safe. It's a very good river for beginners to who want to take a canoe out for the first time. The other thing is it does really have very good scenery along the river. The river also uh, predominantly has a solid bottom. It's mainly stone and sand. This, uh, some people may think that there's a mud bottom, but that's really not a major problem in the Scioto. Some of it is even on bedrock. I think most people don't realize how pretty a river they have. Uh, they see it from the roads and they really can't appreci appreciate the beauty. Uh, you canoeing the Scioto River, you lose really all concept of where you are, that you're even in Hardin County. And it's very difficult to keep track of uh, what area you're in. Uh, the only way you can really tell is by counting the road bridges when you see the go under the bridges. We're really getting a lot of tree cover now, which is making the river very shaded. It's a very comfortable place. And it's good for aquatic life because of the, it'll help to keep the water from getting too hot. You could, along here, you can notice where we're getting some erosion of the bank and how the tree roots are helping to hold the bank. Some of this brush in the river definitely improves fish habitat. Some places along the river we can see what, where the water is going past rocks and it causes ripples in the water. This improves the quality of the water by helping to mix oxygen into the water and oxygen is definitely required for aquatic life to survive. One of the important functions of water, aquatic life in the water is degrading pollutions that are there. This function requires a lot of oxygen. Some of the white blooms that we're seeing along the bank are from the wild raspberries. They make a, uh, a good fruit for a lot of the birds and for the fox in the area. There's quite a few people who do fish this river and they actually can catch a fairly good variety of fish. Uh, Largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, carp, channel cats, bullheads, bluegill, sunfish. And, and uh, some of them are of pretty good size. We're just going past some uh, walnut trees and uh, fairly nice looking walnuts. Some of the different types of wildlife that you can see along the river are wood ducks, mallards, Canada geese, great blue herons, occasionally different hawks and owls. Some of the smaller birds would be song sparrows, 
Northern Orioles, Cardinals, and some of the different woodpeckers, such as the downy. Some of the grapevines that hang down from the trees along the river would be enticing to some of the kids for vines to swing out over the river. We're now going under County Road 175. One of the treats of being on the river is getting a chance to see a northern oriole. And one just flew out ahead over the head from one side of the river to the other. But unfortunately, that'd be very difficult to get on the camera. We've come across a group of cedar waxwings, which are not rare to the county, but it's still not something you see very frequently. So it is to, a treat to bird watchers. Sometimes when you're watching them, you'll see one or two of them fly out a ways and then turn around and fly back and go to the same place where they were perched. What they're doing is catching bugs out of the air. At the upper end, of the upper side of the river here, we had uh, many uh, groups of people moving up and down and transferring and foraging up near Ada and Alger, uh, four or five mile forage into the uh, uh, Hog Creek area and up into the uh, Lake Erie drainage. So this was at uh, one time a, a great uh, thoroughfare. And, uh, Today we had a chance to actually see what some of the uh, Indians and the trappers saw. Uh, just have the enjoyment of uh, getting out in the canoe like this and doing something a lot of people don't have a chance to do. But uh, to do this, you need to uh, have uh, some basic ideas of good, safe uh, canoeing practices. And that's kind of what I want to demonstrate to you today. First of all, what do you wear when you uh, uh, get out in a canoe like this? Uh, Think about uh, any type of protection you need for your skin, for your body. That's the important thing to consider. A good hat is important. Many people like to wear sunglasses that will cut the glare down so you don't get eye strain. Uh, a very, very important feature is to have a pair of sneakers um, that uh, can take a little water and uh, you don't mind walking in the, in the river just in case you have to get out of the canoe so that uh, never go into uh, the river without having uh, good footwear and protection. The other very important thing you need is a light vest. And uh, even expert uh, boatmen uh, do not go into the water without having their vest on. So uh, it's required state law that everybody who's 10 years and younger must wear a light vest, while other people can have it handy just in case. But we recommend here at uh, Sayada River Watch that uh, everyone wears a life jacket at all times, just uh, for safety precautions. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, what to be careful about with a canoe, the first thing about a canoe is that it's tippiest uh, this direction. And uh, so uh, the major two points you need to know about a canoe and the handling the canoe is to stay in the middle of the canoe and also stay low in the canoe. And if you're low and stay in the middle of the canoe, the chances of upsetting are um, uh, really remote. Most people, uh, first thing they think about when they're getting into a canoe uh, or taking a canoe trip is, oh, you're going to upset. But uh, many people have canoed for years, like myself, and I've only upset maybe one time in the 35 years that I've been canoeing. So good safety practices will prevent you from any kind of injury of that type. Um, in terms of uh, uh, what to do in case you do upset, uh, each end of the most canoes are some kind of inflatable um, container that will keep this canoe afloat. Uh, and so if one does uh, turn over, 
the important thing to do is to grab onto the canoe itself. Because the canoe will float where you might not float. The only exception to that would be where uh, the canoe gets into a log jam and might be swept underneath the log jam. But uh, for the most part, the thing you should do is grab onto the canoe uh, as soon as you upset. And uh, that'll, that'll uh, keep most people safe. Um, in terms of um, the uh, kinds of things that one must consider um, when they're canoeing is that the person uh, in the bow, generally speaking, is the one who watches out down the river ahead to make sure that uh, uh, they're not going to hit any rocks or stones. And the person in the bow can be calling out to the person in the stern about what's coming up ahead. So teamwork is important in this. Uh, the person in the bow can actually move with a bow stroke to one side or the other, the canoe, away from rocks, logs, this kind of thing to prevent it from, uh, from uh, moving into uh, to the thing directly. The bowman in general uses a bow stroke, which is a, just a normal, relaxed motion back like this with a paddle. Feather the paddle out from behind so that it comes parallel back along the water like this. Put the little paddle into the water about three-fourths three of the way up the paddle or, or less. And the stroke is one where you actually pull a little bit with this hand and push a little with this one so that it's more or less a, a leverage type paddle. You never do extreme motions like this. This will be tiring to you. And uh, many of the people in the bow like to stroke on the left side for maybe five to ten strokes and then switch over and do a bow stroke on this side too. The person in the stern has the opportunity to do more of the guiding and the person in the stern will also use a bow stroke but always on the alternate side on the other side from the person in the bow and this balances out the movement and the forces within the canoe so that if you, stro if you stroke on both sides the chances of guiding the canoe are a little bit more uh, a problem. But uh, here on the, uh, in the stern, the person generally then uh, will be paddling on the other side, the opposite side of the person in the bow. We'll use a normal bow stroke, as does the person in the front, but occasionally they may use what we call a, a J stroke, which is a stroke where you come back and use a J back this way that flips the back end of the canoe off to the side away from the paddle so that uh, yeah, you uh, will uh, compensate for some of the problems you get uh, in the bow stroke. What happens is that as you stroke with the bow on the back, it will move your canoe off to one side so that you have to compensate every third to fourth stroke with a J stroke. However, some of your best canoeists in the stern will keep a angle on their stroke, on their bow stroke, so that they don't have to use a J stroke. In general, uh, some people like to, to deal as they're canoeing. That keeps them, keeps them low in the water uh, so that they will not upset. Other people like to be more comfortable sitting in the seat. But if you're coming into the rapids where you have the possibility of upsetting and getting in trouble, it's good to go down to your knees and uh, to paddle when you're lower in the boat. One of the features that uh, you can meet in the upper Scioto as you're coming into a rapid-like area uh, would be uh, to try to figure out where to guide the canoe. And uh, the important uh, principle here is that as you look at the rapids ahead of you, and you see that you have quite a bit of water uh, churning ahead of you, you look for where the water moves into a V. And you, uh, the rule is always follow the V uh, into the, the rapids. One thing about uh, canoeing, though, through rougher water, you never uh, hesitate to get out of the canoe above the rapids and check it over and make sure that you uh, safely go through it. Uh, many people don't like to head directly into a rapids. They'll actually back up and uh, use a backstroke and actually move the canoe up uh, very gradually towards the rapids before they enter it. Those are some of the key principles in safety and safety wear and that I think are important in canoeing. So um, yeah. I think uh, with that, that uh, those people will have a very safe trip and be able to watch the great blue herons.
wood ducks, the Canada geese with their goslings are all along this river. Uh, you watch the, uh, the uh, spotted sandpipers, the northern orioles, the uh, warbling vireos. Uh, there'll also be uh, muskrat, and maybe even occasionally, if we keep our eyes open, we'll one day maybe see uh, some of the beaver in this creek again. So uh, those are some of the things I think that uh, canoeists will have a wonderful time. Uh, and enjoy the beauty of this place.